Good afternoon and welcome to uh, part one of a two-part series of webinars entitled 10 Critical Steps to Increase Employee Retention. My name is Roy Barker and I'm with More Diversified Services and I'll be your presenter this afternoon. First off, I want to thank you for joining us and uh, this is a slightly different format. We will do a 25 to 30 minutes and if we run out of time for questions, please feel free to um, email me directly or you can even give me a call uh, at a, the numbers listed on the presentation. Uh, so, and that also at the end we'd like for you to take a few minutes and answer a two-question survey. A little bit more about more diversified services. We're a national full-service uh, boutique consulting firm that specializes in uh, senior living and health care and we do work for both for-profit and not-for-profits. We've been in business for over 40 years and we offer all types of services. Some of the main ones we do are uh, market feasibility studies, uh, competitive analysis, pro formas, SWOT analysis, and then of course operations and benchmarking, marketing, mystery shopping, and employee turnover and you can see the rest and there's also um, you know quite a few that aren't listed but if you there's any work that you need done please feel free to give us a call we'd love to talk to you we also have a, um, a retainer agreement and that's a great way for companies to take advantage of our knowledge and all the um, many things that we've accumulated over the years you know without having to uh, hire somebody full-time can just take advantage of us you know usually about 10 to 12 hours a month so if that shared executive is something that interests you I'd be glad to talk to you about that as well and again my name is Roy and I've been with MDS for over 15 years um, I usually focus more on the operations side with the uh, financials benchmarking marketing and employee retention also with some training and coaching for executive directors and sales teams. So let's get straight to our webinar today. Uh, the point is um, again what are some critical steps that we can take in order to increase employee retention and so today's outline we're going to cover steps one through five initial screening, orientation, job specific training, providing a mentor and ongoing training. So why worry about employee retention? Well, there's not only the monetary cost, and those have been put for entry-level workers that average about $10. The cost of replacing them is about $7,500. But there are also other intangible costs, such as the impact on employee morale, the, and, and the biggest one is the impact on the residents. And I, I can't say enough about um, you know, change is one thing that residents are very adverse to, and so when they see a continual turnover of um, either CNAs or A's or whatever the employee is, that is really very, very hard on them. So, you know, preventing employee turnover, it, it saves money, helps us operate more efficiently, and also it takes a big burden off of the uh, you know the business office staff and the executive director I, I know that I've worked with one group where they were hiring you know 15 or 20 uh, direct care workers every month and so it it gets to be a strain where you know a lot of other uh, important issues are being dropped in order just to you know continually fill staffing so it's uh, very important and also this begins, uh, you know, the employee retention part begins their very first day that they show up. So here again, you know, I talked a little bit about this, the entry level costs are uh, about $7,500 to turn them over. When we get into the management staff, that probably is about 100 to 125 percent of their yearly salary. Uh, executive type employees probably 200 plus of their salary and technical workers uh, just due to all the um, screening that you have to do of course we're not really um, we don't not heavily tech laden but you know there are some organizations that do employ IT types and 
those guys can cost about 400 percent so it's of their salary to turn over so it's very important to not only make the right hire but take all the necessary steps in which to keep uh, you know which to retain these employees that we've taken all this time to to train in assisted living uh, the last turnover rates that I saw were about 45 percent but realistically you know a lot of communities work in the 100 percent range and you know that's turning over every person basically at the community every year and then there are some that I have witnessed that were in the three and five hundred percent range so that was just um, a couple crazy situations but the reality is that there are senior living companies that have taken steps to reduce their employee turnover into the high teens to the you know lower 20s which is excellent and they've done that through these steps of which we're going to cover today also um, one thing that you know comes up is I think there's a joke goes around a lot that says you know the CFO walks into the CEO's office and says how can we continue to train these employees and have them leave and go somewhere else? And the CEO says, well, how can we not train them and have them stay here? So while we think it's, uh, it's useless to train people because they just, you know, grow into a position and leave, that's not always true. Employees want to uh, feel like a valuable part of the team, and, and that's what we need to do in order to retain them is make them feel like that. The, the other big uh, advantage to the re retaining employees is on the risk management side and you know hopefully nobody will ever have to go to court on it but I can say that there will be suits on this because that's where we're seeing the, the largest growth in litigation is you know in services and care provided and a lot of times it has to do with not enough staffing and so when you have uh, no calls and no shows that not only lowers your staffing but then also when you know half of your team or better are you know 30 day new employees the other risk you run is that you know these people weren't trained well and didn't know what they were doing so employee retention can can help you with that um, you know in case you ever get uh, get find yourself embroiled in a lawsuit the retention can be a, a big thing in your favor so let's get into the first item is initial screening of course you want to talk to them about gaps and um, any short-term jobs to find out exactly what's going on and I know that a lot of people just um, kind of skip over this if, if they do have gaps or some uh, a lot of short-term jobs and what we need to do is ask more questions about this because unfortunately in the economic times that we've been through there have been a lot of people who have been struggling to just make ends meet and they've also uh, you know been underemployed and a good friend of mine was in the building trades and you know she went through probably four or five layoffs over the last six or seven years with companies downsizing and uh, consolidating in the building trades industry and so uh, being a single mother with uh, you know a house and kids to feed she had to take you know any job that was available and so you know her resume while it looked terrible uh, she was really a good steady employee she just needed a chance so take the time to ask those questions um, getting a second opinion you know we also recommend either having a colleague set in on an interview or having a, uh, a team that that helps you in the hiring process and I think it's uh, Amazon that has a very very in-depth group screening process and anybody along the way can veto a hire just because you know they only not only want to make sure that they have the skill set necessary but they also want to make sure that they have the attitude and that they will fit in with the work group uh, you know which they'll be participating so sometimes we say that it's better to hire for attitude you know and train for skill in certain instances because um, 
you have to look at a, a, an attitude as something uh, that people pass around, and so you have to ask yourself: Is you know, is this a person that uh, do we want other people to catch their attitude? Because uh, having a great attitude can boost a team, and uh, having a poor attitude can really bring a team down. Another good idea is maybe send out a questionnaire, or in some instances, a test prior to the interview to gain a little more information. Uh, perform a thorough background check. Here again, this is a little dicey because uh, past employers don't want to uh, give you any information for fear of being sued. But what you can do, you know, you can get the name, rank, and serial number as far as, you know, hire dates and uh, date, you know, beginning and end dates of employment. But sometimes just having a casual conversation with the person on the other end of the phone, they can let more information uh, come out than than just asking direct questions. So you know, I just encourage you to kind of just have a conversation with the person about things, about you know, jobs and different things like that. And you, you never know what might come out. The other thing that's important to ask is um, if they were eligible for rehire. And a lot of times people will tell you yes, and I've had cases of that where I know that they weren't, and I know that somebody has been told yes just for fear that they might, you know, get into some type of litigation down the road. So you can't, well, you can't always count on it. Go ahead and ask that. And then, of course, contact any references. Um, here again, having a conversation and just, uh, you know, being not quite as formal and professional. You know, we need to get the information, but sometimes just having a casual conversation with people, uh, you know, more either good or bad can come out about the candidate. Second thing we'll talk about orientation. Um, you know, this starts, should start immediately, and, and a lot of times it's just not done at all. We just go, uh, you know, directly from an interview to putting somebody in a position to work and what we need to do is take the time to uh, you know really orientate them about not only the work environment but the job they're going to be doing uh, the team that they're going to be on and any work processes or procedures that they you know may need to know while it sounds a little counterintuitive this can actually reduce startup costs by uh, getting the employee off to a faster start then uh, you know just kind of throwing them out of desk or putting them out on the floor and just letting them find their own way uh, also saves uh, supervisor some future time because he's going to be able to see you know what skills they excel in and where they may be lacking and be able to probably get them some help sooner and then um, it also will help the employee's attitude by not feeling so lost and then we also, you know, the, the supervisor needs to cover with them their realistic job expectations and, uh, you know, that way they cut down on the mistakes that are likely made. Third thing is job-specific training, kind of what, what I was talking about uh, on the, the, um, the orientation is, you know, once we kind of get them uh, situated and orientated to the position that they're in to you know the company the work group the building the you know their environment that surrounds them we want to make sure that uh, we give them the training that they need because uh, every, each company operates a little bit different has systems different systems and procedures and different things that are important to them so it's very important to be very specific uh, and that way the you know the employee can be confident that they're giving you uh, what you want. Uh, this also would help you address their strengths and weaknesses that, you know, if uh, maybe you want to reshuffle workloads or positions based on somebody's strength or if you do detect a weakness in this, again, you can get them the proper training to uh, help strengthen them in these areas where they can be a good producer for you. The um, and of course, you know, this is a payback too because you also will increase the productivity of this employer at a fast of the employee at a faster rate. And then um, of course we will have a happier workforce and then we also will 
have happier residents, which leads to happy customers, which leads to retaining our residents and attracting um, new prospects as well. The fourth thing is provide a mentor, and what they do is they can serve as a coach to help the new employees. You know, sometimes starting at a new job, even if you have a very good orientation and good job-specific training, sometimes, uh, you know, you kind of get out there and you feel lost, and you're not sure if you're on the right path, if you're doing this right, or maybe you run into a situation you don't know how to handle. So great thing is to provide a mentor. And, and need to remember that a mentor should not only be, you know, a, a high achiever, somebody that excels at their work, but they also have to have a good attitude. Uh, we sure don't want to pair up a new employee with a, a an employ with um, an existing employee who either not very good at their job or is marginal at their job and and or you know has a crummy attitude. So we want to make sure that we find a high performer with a good attitude to put them with to you know kind of help guide them and always be there for this employee to uh, for the new employee to go to this also assimilates into company culture it's uh you know they can help them kind of navigate the the office politics and know what's going on and the also the the value that a new employee can gain, even if you've been in the business for a while, there's always still something to learn. So pairing them with a, a you know, having a mentor, they may even learn some new tricks of the trade. And then also the new mentor or, or the mentor can pick up on what a new employee might need in order to help them uh, grow in their professional life, maybe additional training or coaching. And of course, the last thing we'll talk about today is point five is the ongoing training. And here again, this is important. Like I, I think I said before, the employees want to feel like that the company is investing in them, like they're important. And um, you know, the people, uh, employers think employees leave because of they might earn 10 cents more going across the street. And that's not true. The empirical study after empirical study has proven that uh, wage incentives are not the main reason that uh, employees leave a company. The main reason they leave is they don't feel valued. They feel like they're lost and alone and, you know, fighting a fight all by themselves. There was a study that I read not long ago that said, um, about 80% of employees are pushed out and only 20% are pulled out. And basically what that's saying is that, you know, 20% are lured away by something another company may be offering and then, you know, 80% of the employees are pushed out either because of a, uh, working for a bad manager, not feeling valuable. So, you know, I guess if we look at that study, we could say that, you know, 80% of our employee turnover is basically uh, controllable and it's usually self-inflicted in some manner. Um, also, uh, you know, set, uh, schedule seminars and workshops. You know, nowadays we have the internet, so a lot of this can be done online. It's not like we have to uh, pack somebody up and put them on a plane and ship them off to get the training. We can put them down in front of a computer and um, the great part about this is not only are we investing in an employee, making them a better employee, but we have that risk management asset that we are helping guard against as well. And uh, you've got to dedicate a t the time and the money, and about 57% don't dedicate enough time to ongoing training, and about 40% uh, don't have enough money in the budget. So, you know, one thing that we say is train to retain. And there are also a couple good services. Uh, one is on the front end, the initial screening. There are some companies that have some very good screening techniques that they use to try to predict the uh, likelihood that somebody will turn over quickly. And a couple of them, even the test will be a predictor of 
uh, workers' comp claims as well, the way that they ask the question. So there's a, and, and they also provide uh, some follow-on during the onboarding process and communicating with the new employee, either through email or text, just um, sending them weekly questions that may be like, uh, you know, how's your job going? Are you liking it there? Do you like your manager? Uh, do, are you thinking about quitting? You know, does this seem like it's going to be a good fit for you? So they can give you some insight into, uh, you know, the employee doesn't feel uh, hesitant to speak with anybody about it, you know, through a text or an email. They feel much more comfortable about sharing that information, but it also gives you the intelligence to, um, you know, take this information and use it to, you know, maybe help save an employee that's thinking about leaving for some reason. Also, on the uh, training portion, there are a lot of good online trainings out there, and, you know, they have the dashboards that can help you, you know, schedule trainings and also keep up with who's done what training. You know, those are the records that would be invaluable in case you ever did have to go into court. You could pull those and say, look, we've done everything. Uh, possible, you know, to try to train this employee to, you know, do right. And um, also you can record your own messages and, you know, kind of broadcast out to your employees as well if you want to put your own welcome message or, you know, maybe there's something new and different that's changing in the company. You can add it to this uh, online portal where all your employees can see that as well. So here again, what we want to do is, you know, we want to increase our employee retention. And think about it this way, you know, you want to make your company uh, an employer of choice, not an employer of last resort. And so uh, also with the, the recruiting, see, the Internet has made this uh, very easy to cast a wide net by posting jobs online. But unfortunately, uh, some of our HR people have gotten a little complacent with that, and we don't do the old-fashioned recruiting. And so I just advise everybody, you know, you have to sell in order to gain good employees, just like you have to sell in order to gain good residents. You need to be out in, you know, in the schools in your area, in the nursing programs, or in the uh, CNA or A training programs need to be talking, you know, to church groups, high school groups, and, and try to explain that there are other positions besides direct care at our communities. And, you know, a lot of people want to start out in direct care and, uh, you know, while they're in high school or college and they can work their way up. But we also need to talk to the business and the marketing types to let them know what kind of jobs that we have available and work really hard to build a network of professionals in our area and keep in touch with them so that, uh, you know, if they get ready to make a change or if you, you know, have a great position co coming up, you might have a, you know, select group of four or five really top-notch individuals that you know that you can, uh, you know, make an offer to to come to work for you. So it's very important that we just don't get uh, – you know, sucked into the complacency of just posting it online and thinking that we've done enough. You still have to get out there, work very hard, you know, to recruit the brightest and the best, and that will definitely uh, help increase your retention. So also just want to say save the date. We're going to have part two on April the 30th. I think that's a Thursday. Also, it'll be uh, from 1 to 1.30, another 30-minute um, webinar and we're going to cover steps 6 through 10 which is creating opportunities for advancement, challenging employees, praising employees, uh, developing an awesome company culture which is very very important and then also really getting to know your employees. Like I said if you have any questions or comments feel uh, free to email me at the address at Roy Barker at m-d-s.com or you can give me a call at 817-925-8374. Again, I want to thank everybody for uh, your time and participation and look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.